Hi, I'm back. Um, this is going to be my first content video. Um, so today I'm going to talk about uh, the most recent thing that it's actually a set of things that happened to me uh, medically. Um, I was actually still in the recovering phase from my last surgery, which I'll talk about later. But um, it was a couple days before I went back to class for the spring semester. Um, so it was about two weeks ago tomorrow. Um, actually, it started about two weeks ago today. So um, what happened to me turned out to be appendicitis. So uh, what I want to talk about today is the signs that I experienced and um, what I did when I uh, started seeing those signs, how to handle it, um, how I eventually got it checked out, and the process to go through uh, getting that treated and recovering from that. So um, I guess uh, the first bit of it started um, two weeks ago Thursday, Thursday evening. I noticed that I wasn't really hungry at all. Um, I even made like a really nice dinner, um, fancy like carrot wasabi soup, and I just really wasn't feeling it. So I figured, eh, maybe I'm just not hungry. And well, yeah, it's not that bad because um, one of my other videos I'm going to talk about is the weight gain that I've experienced from my medicine. So I'm like, great, I'm not that hungry. Maybe I won't eat too much and lose some of the 50 pounds that I've gained. But anyway. That's besides the point. Um, I figured, you know, it's just a small one-time thing and I can get over it. So I went to bed, got up the next morning, and I, I still wasn't hungry at all. And I um, was getting ready to go to the gym because I had just gotten to the point where I could go to the gym again after my last surgery. It had been a few weeks and um, I had been healing according to plan. Uh, so I got dressed and all that and I was putting my hair up and then I just got a pain. I started to have a pain like right near my uh, belly button and I was like, Ugh, what is this? I was like, is it because I didn't eat last night? Is it because of something I did eat? I thought, you know, I, I don't normally cook a lot so I thought maybe that I had poisoned myself which was crazy because there was no meat or anything and I washed all the vegetables and I cooked all the vegetables appropriately but you never know. So anyway, I decided to forgo the gym um, for a while. I sat around in my gym clothes because I was like, oh, maybe the pain will go away and I'll be able to go. Um, I was worried, you know, maybe I'll throw up because I was feeling kind of sick, but I didn't. So I just ended up sitting around for hours and hours. Finally, I gave up on the gym and I just got back in my PJs and decided to wait it out. But at that point, it was late Friday afternoon. And I was actually feeling worse instead of better. So I weighed my options and they were basically go to urgent care or hope it gets better. And if it doesn't end up in the ER over the weekend. So just to be on the safe side, I went over to the ER and, or not the ER, I'm sorry. I went over to urgent care and it took forever to get seen like an hour. Um, Honestly, I think I've been seen faster in some ERs, but they eventually got me back there. I could barely, you know, stand up at that point. I was kind of hunched over. It was hurting really bad. And at that point, the pain had migrated, as it does with appendicitis, down to the uh, lower right region. Um, and they, of course, assumed this might be appendicitis. And I've actually been um, suspected to have appendicitis about six times in my life from my other health problems. So I assumed, eh, it's probably nothing. Maybe it's a cyst. Maybe it's just random phantom pain or something with my endometriosis that didn't get taken out. Um, but they went ahead and did some tests and it turned out my white blood cell counts were a little high and, you know, I had a little bit of a fever. And at that point they did the, um, rebound test, which they literally poke your stomach. And it wasn't good. When, you know, they pressed against my stomach and, and released it and all that, I had intense pain. And at that point, I was getting nauseated and I couldn't even sit up. It, it progressed really fast after I got to urgent care. So they actually had to send me over to the ER in an ambulance because um, I, 
I could have driven if I had felt up to it, but I was so nauseated and dizzy and I couldn't stand up, so it was not safe. So I implore you, if you are ever in that position, please just take the ambulance. It's not worth putting yourself or someone else's life in danger just to save the money. I know that's easy to say because it is expensive a lot of places, but you know, a lot of places will work with you on the cost, which I will also talk about later in one of my other videos. So at that point, I got to the ER. One of the other advantages to getting an ambulance is you get seen a lot faster. Um, they take you right back in the back and they often have room ready for you. So you don't have to wait in the waiting room, which is probably the worst part of the ER, hands down. So they know what you're coming there for. They're ready for you. Um, they took me right in for a CT scan. Um, luckily, they did the IV contrast. So what contrast is, is basically it's dye that they get into you somehow. They can either do it orally or um, intravenously, which is through the IV. Um, I have had a CT scan in the past with oral contrast, and I try never to do that because that stuff is disgusting. And they give you like 32 ounces of it to drink. It's, it's huge. It's like that. It took me like over an hour to drink almost that much, and I couldn't even get it all down, and I thought I was going to puke the entire time. So I warned them about that, and I was already nauseated, so they weren't going to make me do that. So they just injected me with a bunch of dye, which, thank you, it makes you feel really warm. It's a really weird feeling that you get through your entire system. But they did the scan, and it came back, and yeah, you got appendicitis. And I was like, huh, it finally happened, <laughs> which is a weird reaction. But... Like, um, I was talking to my cousin a while ago when they thought I had appendicitis another time, and she's like, you still have your appendix? Because all the times I've been in the hospital, like, it's ridiculous that I still had it. But anyway, so I sat in my room for a while, and they, um, you know, did some prep work. Um, I don't really remember what it was, but then they took me over, got me ready with the anesthesiologist, which, um, one thing you do want to keep in mind, since I have very severe asthma, which I'll talk about in another video, um, they have to be really careful with the anesthesia. So if you have any kind of respiratory disorder or illness, um, definitely let them know if you're going in for surgery, because if you're under anesthesia, they will have to intubate you, and that could really aggravate uh, your whole system. Um, when I had my first surgery, they told me all about that and the measures they were going to take. And with my first surgery, I didn't even feel anything afterwards from the intubation. This time I did. It was a little rough in there for a while, um, but it still went okay. So they rolled me in. Um, it was, uh, there are two ways that they can do an appendectomy, which is taking out the appendix. They can either do a traditional incision, which is I think it's several inches long and they just take it right out of there. But uh, generally what they try to do is a less invasive technique. It's uh, laparoscopy, laparoscopic, you know, appendectomy. What that is, is they inflate your stomach and they do a couple smaller incisions and do it with scopes. Um, so they'll mainly do it like through the belly button and a couple other places after you're inflated so they when they poke through they don't hit your organs <laughs> um so I've had two of those now I'm I'm a veteran but um one of the uh, things that can happen because of the inflation is you can get like gas pains that travel up into your shoulder and that's no fun just FYI um I actually didn't have any of that this time which was really surprising um but when I woke up I of course a ton. Um, they were very good about giving me pain medicine while I was in the ER. I was on Dilaudid, which is a good one. Um, I prefer intravenous medications because uh, the oral, like, oxy-related medicines that I've had, I get weird side effects from. I'm not sure if that's all in my head because I, it might be the same thing that's in the intravenous, but I haven't noticed the same side effects that I tend to get with like oxycodone. Um, so I, I was doing okay. Um, my parents actually 
came in from several hours away to kind of get me back on my feet and pick up my car from urgent care because it was still there. Um, now, one thing that has changed from how they used to do appendectomies is they used to at least keep you overnight for observation and such, but because appendectomies are so safe now, they generally it treat it as an outpatient procedure. So I was only there a few hours after I woke up, which, you know, has its upsides and downsides. I think, you know, it's nice that you can get out of there and get home, but on the off chance that something goes wrong, I think it's, you know, not a lot does go wrong. I think I looked up and um, there's like barely, I don't remember the percentage, but it's extremely, extremely low for especially laparoscopic appendectomies. One thing I didn't mention earlier about the traditional way where they do one big incision, what they do that for now is mainly when your appendix has burst and there's like a risk of sepsis and huge infection because what happens is it's basically a whole bunch of gunk that built up in your appendix, including like feces and yeah, nice stuff that you want in your body. And that kind of pours out into your insides and they have to get it all out. Luckily that didn't happen to me because they caught it pretty early, which is especially good because they said it was progressing really fast because it was within hours that it had progressed to, you know, going, migrating to where it was and being really responsive to the rebound test. And that normally takes a couple of days is what they told me. I don't know how accurate that is, but it's possible. Anyway, so I finally got home. I was um, healing pretty well, especially because I had already had the same kind of procedure done, not on my appendix, but the same laparoscopic procedure done. So I knew what to expect and I was feeling pretty good, but then I had to go to school on Tuesday and you're not supposed to carry any heavy weights after surgery. However, I'm a law student. I have books. There's no getting around that. I have a rolling bag, so I figured eh, that's probably good enough. It wasn't. I ended up um, really aggravating the sutures, and I also had like a mild infection, like internal infection. So I ended up in the ER on um, Thursday, the Thursday after my appendectomy, and I had to get antibiotics that I'm still on, which makes me sick. But that's just a lesson. Obey the weight limit. Don't do this. Don't make yourself sick again. <laughs> it's not worth it. <laughs> and uh, the great thing about that Thursday is I started out by getting stuck in the snow because we're in North Carolina and it actually snowed like six inches, five or six inches. I'm not sure exactly how much, but that's ridiculous. I moved here and I thought, yay, I'm done with snow. No, it's the one year they had a huge snowfall. So I got stuck in the snow. I never even got stuck in the snow back in Maryland. What? So I actually got out of there. I went straight to the ER. After I was out of the ER and walking back into my house, walkway was icy and I felt straight on my side. So Thursday was rough on my body, which is another reason if you have appendicitis and you're healing, don't push it. Just do what they say. It's really not worth everything that can and probably will go wrong if you're anything like me. But at this point, um, the incisions are healing up really well. One thing I can recommend um, is, you know, cocoa butter after the incisions have fully healed and closed because it has really um, helped with how my incisions feel, the ones I already had. And um, they're starting to look like really unnoticeable. I would show them, but I'm not really wearing a nice outfit. So <laughs> some other day. <laughs> um, so really all I can tell you is Listen to what your body is saying to you. If there's pain and you know that it's, you know, in your navel, if it's going down to the right lower, it's the right lower quadrant is what they call it. Get it checked out. Even if it's nothing, just go to an urgent care that um, the urgent care I have has imaging capabilities, but a lot of them don't. So I would say search out for one that does. You can ask them and they'll be able to tell you. And it's just worth getting checked out. It's way better than being stuck in the hospital for days or a week even if you have an appendix that ends up bursting, which I have a classmate who had that happen. And it's way worse. Longer recovery time, more painful surgery, bigger scar, bigger incision to have to deal with. Just get it taken care of early. 
it's way better to get it checked out and have nothing happen than to have your appendix burst. <laughs> so sorry to be a bit of a mom, but that's what happened to me. I now have experience with that. The good thing is it can never happen again. You only have one appendix. When they take it out, it's gone. So that's the most recent thing that happened to me. I hope you enjoyed my words of wisdom or, you know, just to know what to watch out for. And I'll be checking back in in a little while. Um, I think my next video is going to be the endometriosis story, which is what I had my previous surgery for. So watch out for that. Have a great day, guys.